For more videos on people's struggles, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. On March 22nd, that was Monday, workers of Amazon in Italy staged a strike and it was a historic strike because uh, the union, it was not only the employees of Amazon, but also delivery workers, the drivers who were actually employed by third parties who took part in the strike. And there's been, this is a culmination of months of negotiations between the union and Amazon and the employers. The, among the key demands is the fact that Amazon, the, the workers do want better working conditions, some of them delivering a crazy number of parcels a day, up to 200 even. So to talk about this, we have with us Giuliano Granato of Potere al Popolo. Thank you so much, Giuliano, for joining us. So first of all, I just want to uh, ask you about the strike itself. Could you maybe talk a bit about how, you know, what was the kind of mobilizations that took place, if any, the organizing around it, how people responded? Because one thing we do know from media reports is that Amazon has Amazon's business increased massively in the last year with the pandemic. There are numbers which say around there was a 30% increase in just one year alone. And at the same time, the workers can continue to be really struggle. So could you maybe talk a bit about what's happening or what happened on the ground? Yeah, of course. Thank you to you. And yeah, on 22nd of March, it was a very important day of struggle. And not just for Amazon, but I think for all, Ita all the workers here in Italy. Amazon here in Italy employs um, roughly 40,000 people. 20,000 are employed directly for, by Amazon and other 20,000 are drivers uh, employed by third part, as you were uh, telling us before. And the importance of this struggle is that for the first uh, time in the history, not just in Italy, but all over the world, there was a strike of all these different workers. Um, Obviously, it, the the action it, it was quite different from a place to another to other places. For example, in the north of Italy, where the structure of Amazon uh, first arrived a few years ago, uh, the struggle was more uh, impactating. It was uh, very effective, I, I would say. Here in the south, there are less centers, less Amazon centers. And the workers had many, many troubles in striking. For example, just to let you understand, here uh, where I live in Napoli, in the south of Italy, uh, there was a strike uh, in Arzano, that is an industrial center close to the, the city, but apparently no one striked. No workers uh, are striking. And it was not so strange if you think that Amazon is very is able to control the workforce and to, um, to uh, eliminate the, the, the struggle of the trade unions. So it, it depends where you um, look at the situation. In the North, uh, the struggle was, was effective. And if you, you have to think that in 2020, Amazon gr grew a lot in Italy too. They, were, they hired 2,600 people and so as in, in other parts of the world, there was a grow in the activities of Amazon. But for the workers, the situation is still very, very difficult. The struggle is basically for a new contract, a new national contract. And the, the important thing is that the um, workers are not struggling. Primarily, they prim they first struggle is not for their wages because related to the to other wages in this country in Italy, they are quite well well paid. The reason they were um, struggling and they were striking uh, was that they are protesting for workloads or work conditions because they are a very hard condition. As in the United States, as in the UK, they cannot pee during the day work day. So it, it, these are the the main reasons, and the other. Uh, important reason was a, for a political recognition uh, for the trade unions because Amazon all over the world has the same the same um, behavior uh, in related to the, the trade unions. They hate trade unions. Amazon hates trade unions, and they do whatever they can to eliminate trade unions from their um, workplaces. It means that in uh, many workplaces people are hired just for a few months, two or three months, because the algorithms on the management of Amazon, um, after three months, workers are not productive anymore. But apart from economically productivity, 
there is another reason that is a political reason. They don't want to give time to workers to get organized by other people, by trade unions. So uh, the struggle was for uh, living conditions, working conditions, but also for political reasons, because trade unions need to struggle to enter Amazon workplaces, Amazon um, warehouses, but also uh, drivers companies that are mainly small and medium companies employed by Amazon, they have no power because Amazon has the real power, but drivers has to struggle together with Amazon uh, warehouse uh, workers. And on 22nd of March, there was a first important day of struggle all over the Italy. Absolutely. Uh, Julian, in this context, I wanted to ask you about the aspect you were referring to towards the end also, which is the challenges faced by trade unions. Uh, in organizing workers. And we know that this is, of course, a global phenomenon. And we also know that this is, of course, not just with Amazon, but especially uh, with all platform companies in what is called the gig economy these days, you know, food delivery workers, other service workers. So could you maybe uh, take us also through what is the kind of mobilizing that in Italy that has take, been taking place in these sectors because there are a huge number of people employed. Their services have become all the more important last year over the pandemic. They've almost in some ways been at the front line, so to speak. So could you maybe also tell us what they're going through and what is the kind of organizing take place, taking place around them? Yeah. In 2020, there was a huge increase in workers employed by these companies in the gig economy. Uh, for example, in Lombardy, in the north of Italy, the richest region in Italy, uh, there was a judge a few weeks ago uh, that had his sentence and that he compelled the gig economy companies to hire 60,000 people that were not employed, but they were, they were contracted by these companies uh, as uh, autonomous workers. The judge sentence that they are not autonomous workers. They are employed by these companies. They, has, they have the right to a proper contract and to, um, and to um, a proper uh, working conditions. Thousands of, of, of riders right now, and they, they are struggling from years. In the last months, they had also important victories. And but there is there are many problems with obviously in organizing with this kind of uh, workforce because of the contracts because of the work, the working conditions I was telling you before. But apart from the difficulties, I think the most important thing is that for years academics, researchers, trade unionists too were telling us that with post capitalist economies. There was no space for organizing. There was no space for trade unions and for political parties organizing this kind of workers. False. These struggles in the last months are showing us that the conflict in a capitalist world is unsupremable. And the struggles follow the capital. Obviously, workers has, have a lot of problems, a lot of troubles in in finding new ways to organize themselves, but finally they find a proper way. On, the, on last Friday, there was a strike of riders in different cities, and they were um, protesting all over the main uh, cities uh, in Italy with their bikes, with their motor bikes, and it was quite effective. And also, if you look at Deliveroo, for example, one of the main of this gig company, yesterday, uh, and they had their own, their own quotation at London Stock uh, Exchange Market. It was a failure. If you look at the, uh, the, um, the aspect of, the, of the, the company, they started with an idea. Okay, we will sell our shares to, uh, uh, at a price between uh, £3.9 to £4.6. Then later, they changed their mind and they said, okay, it's too high. We can you have to low the price, so it will be between three point nine and four point one. Finally, they low again, and the, the final price was the effective price was three point nine pounds for sure. But at the end of the day, they had the fall of twenty six percent. That was a big, big failure. And the main reason is that Deliveroo is is saying is going to be put in a blacklist because of the misbehavior, misbehavior the bad behavior 
in, in, in related to their own employees because they don't treat well their own employees and it's uh, um, uh, it's due it's um, it's due to the worker struggles in the last month because thousands and thousands of, of riders were able to put working condition gig economy at the in the, and the main uh, in, in, in the main, in the, in the agenda, in the political agenda of different countries. So they were able to put their own conditions um, at the, in the agenda of the governments too. Obviously, governments are not acting in favor of these workers, but many people uh, are now conscious of these uh, difficult working conditions of thousands and thousands of workers. So I think that um, these this piece, this, this part of working class um, is going to have a centrality up, up in, um, in a, up, if you look at the symbol, the symbol of, of the, the struggle, they are the, the, a kind of vanguard, not be, also because they are able to, to block the economy, the circulation of the capital, obviously riders in the cities, but logistics workers here in Italy, 10 years, the struggles are going on from 10 years on, and they won a lot of, uh, of, of things about in terms of wages, in terms of working conditions, and they were able to disrupt the, the circulation of capital. So now they are in the, on the front of the, work, of, of the class struggle, and they are a symbol of the, the working class struggle. And I think that around this kind of workers, we can join and we can unite uh, different categories and we can see a new face of the uh, of the class struggle. Whoever in the past years uh, told us that class struggle uh, as that uh, was wrong, definitely was wrong. And the struggle of last uh, weeks are demonstrating us that they were definitely wrong. Absolutely. And also, I, uh, Julian, also wanted to ask you a bit about what the approach of the government has been. We know that Italy has been going through a considerable political crisis over the past few years, governments coming and going. Uh, alliances, which are almost unnatural if you look at the ideological you know, nature of the parties taking place and uh, the continuance of a technocratic form of government, so to speak. So in this context, uh, are, has have any of these governments either at the national or regional level addressed the demands of, say, gig economy workers or reached out or you know, even listened to what they have to say? Or are there any kind of model policies that have emerged or demands that have emerged in that context? Yeah, well, the new government, Draghi government, Draghi was the chief for the European Central Bank, it's a technocratic government, and this government unites all kind of parties, apart from the fascists of Fratelli d'Italia, Brothers of Italy, uh, all the other parties in the parliament are, are joined the, this, new, this new government. And now we are uh, waiting for the first measures, uh, because there will be probably a change with respect to 2011 technocratic government. That, that year was the year of the austerity measures. It, it, it was a different phase, not just in Italy, also all over Europe. Now they have money to spend because the struggles, are, they, they fear the struggles. Even if we have not so, a so high, so high level of struggles here in, in Europe, but they fear the possibility, the chance that in the future there could be uh, very important struggles. So Draghi government uh, for, for, for now um, is, is going to act uh, in, in order to spend money also for the workers, mainly for the, for, for, for the companies, for the main companies, but also for the workers and for uh, lower classes. But I think the project of this government is focusing again on the north, on the capital in the north of Italy. Not because there is a, a, a struggle between the south and the north, a ge geographic struggle, but because in the north of Italy, there are the main industries. Fiat was there, and the main companies, are all, all of them are in the north of Italy. So this government has a project. They, they, this government has to uh, give money and give power to these companies in order uh, to let them um, still uh, be united with the uh, international um, um, chain of production 
that links especially northern Italy with Germany. The south, in this context, the, the, that is the, re, the, the, most re, the, the most poor region, the poorest region in, in the country, is marginalized. And we, as subaltern classes, have to think not just about resistance to this project, but also to a new project for the subaltern classes, for the lower classes, in order not just to resist to the attack of the government and, and the enterprises of the companies, but also to imagine a new future and a transition to a new system that we call, we still call socialism. Thank you so much, Juliana, for talking to us. Thanks to you. That's all we have time for today. Keep watching People's Spy.